I did a gig in India when I played solo, when I was uh, studying yoga, and I did a uh, performance with, uh, actually it was solo, but that night there was also a fellow, an Indian fellow that played the Nagwasadam, which was a big oboe. And we played a little together, and then I did play solo. I also played solo at the Greek Theater in Berkeley, California. And then I also played solo at the um, Museum of Modern Art. So uh, I, I have, uh, it, it's quite, it's quite, um, well, how could I say? Playing by yourself is hard for a, uh, many reasons, but uh, playing a wind instrument is physically challenging, you see. And uh, so I had to really be strong physically, and of course, always mentally. You go out and you play solo. How does that differ from when you're just at home practicing? It, it, it doesn't differ. It doesn't differ. When I'm at home practicing, I'm, it's the same thing. Uh, when I'm playing out in public, it's wonderful because then the people are there and they sort of inspire me and take it to another level. But it's the same process when I'm here at home practicing. It's the same thing, really. I'm thinking and uh, getting into my subconscious. And that's what it's about. Although when I'm practicing at home, I'm practicing so that I can get into my subconscious when I'm performing for people. Uh, but the process of playing, you all uh, improvising, you're always in your subconscious. You're always going towards your subconscious. That's where you want to be at. That's the music you want to create things that are deep inside of you. That's what you want to come out. I start out playing things that I know, uh, sort of to get the blood going. Those things can be described often as cliches. So you begin with the cliche so that you can get the process in motion. Once the process is in motion, then I'm not thinking about anything. Then it's, thinking is over. You can't play and think. Can't do that. So the cliches are just when you get up and front of, oh, blah, blah, you start, oh yeah, right. once you get it going, it's over. Then you're playing. You get, as uh, my friend uh, KJ said, then you get out of the way and let the music play. Your, your subconscious, your whatever, whatever your pipeline is to the celestial music world, then you get out of the way, let that happen. When that does happen, are you ever surprised? Do you ever play something that makes you laugh? I, I surprise myself when I'm playing, yeah. But this is, it's a, uh, yeah, because it's in my subconscious. And I'm not planning it, that's the beauty. So I played something, I said, wow, yeah, gee, I didn't know that was there. You never know what it's, where it's gonna come from. It could be Glenn Miller or Duke Ellington or anything. That's right, anything. Anything you've heard. Most of your, it would seem that most of your listening experiences happened as a younger man. Now you are uh, a... Uh, an older man. An older man. Uh, do you still hear things that, uh, that jump out at you that might show up at some point? Uh, you mean music? Music, traffic, voices, anything. Uh, sure. Um, I don't listen to a lot of music, but whatever music I listen to, I hear something, which is important. It's going to go into the subconscious, go into the computer, 
you know, the real computer, the human computer. And that's going to come up. It's going to come out in some way. Whenever I call on it, whenever I demand it, which is in performance, and I'm demanding, please speak to me. Thank <laughs> you.